Hey guys, it's Base Kato, and yes, I'm back with another video. I'm going to switch it up. You guys know normally I'm either doing my makeup and videos or talking about my life in this, that, and the third, but today we're going to switch it up. So besides YouTube, one of like the other main apps I'm always on all the time is probably like my number two app on my phone, and that is Reddit. I literally love Reddit. I joined Reddit four years ago in June and ever since I've joined I've been on Reddit like non-stop. So if you don't know what Reddit is, I got you. Reddit is a massive collection of forums where people can share news, content, or comment on other people's posts. And so Reddit has a lot of different communities called subreddits. And one of the subreddits that I'm really into right now is called True Off My Chest. And pretty much uh, this subreddit is people getting stuff off of their chest, whether that's like a confession they've been holding in or just things that they've been dealing with for the past, you know, months or years. And honestly, some of these posts are very, very interesting. What I was gonna do today, I was gonna start off by reading maybe three or four posts at the most and comment on these posts. So let's go ahead and get into the first story. My husband, who's 37, has been friends with this woman, Abigail, who is 24 for a little while. They both see the same trainer, so that's how they met. It always starts off at the gym, I swear. He invited her over to our house for dinner and she met our children. Girl. When I brought up concerns about how they seemed to be getting very close, very fast, he insisted that they were just friends and that I had nothing to worry about. After that conversation, his relationship with her seemed to settle down into no different than any other friendship he has, he has, so I thought. First of all, that's so many red flags because why is this 24-year-old friend, like, meeting, like, your children? It's like, y'all are married, really. Why is she meeting your children? Like, unless she's babysitting them, I don't see the point. This morning, he got a phone call, and he took it outside. When he came back in, he was really shaken. He said he was going to the ER because Abigail had gotten into a car accident. I asked why she was calling him, and he said something about how her sister was on vacation and she got into a fight with her friend. It was complete bullshit, but he was out the door. Yeah, that's bullshit. He said, I tried texting and calling him, but he didn't answer. I couldn't leave the house because our youngest is sick. He comes back hours later and tells me he needs to talk. He looks terrible. He admits to me he slept with Abigail. He said it only happened once when he was drinking and she got pregnant from him. I don't believe that because it just seems like he probably was with her and probably had sex with her multiple times prior to her getting pregnant, you know? I just don't think that was a one-time thing. He admits he slept with Abigail. He said it only happened once when he was drinking and she got pregnant from him. He was going to tell me soon. He was not going to tell her nothing. But now that she got in a semi-serious car accident, they don't know the baby is going to survive. And he's a wreck about it. I want to slap him for cheating. I'm disgusted by him. I kicked him out. I don't care if he stays in the hospital or with his brothers or in a ditch. I'm so mad at him for a thousand reasons. Yeah. And that's the end of that story. Honestly, let me put my two cents in. Divorce. Like, <laughs> divorce so fast. So many red flags. Like... He's 37, but sleeping around with a 24-year-old. There's a lot of like men who fetishize being with younger women. So yeah, he may have gotten with you when y'all were both young, but it's like, okay, y'all are both starting to get old. Now it's like, he now he wants another new young thing and it's gonna be like a cycle. That's my theory. So that's why I would divorce him off the rip. And then not only that, the girl was pregnant that's that's messy you gotta be careful about them personal trainers or people that go to the gym like <laughs> another thing is with reddit so like i said people will post things and then people will leave comments 
So I'm gonna just leave, read like the top three comments on each post and just keep it pushing. The first comment says, yeah, and I'm about to fly to the moon. <laughs> That's what I said. So this person said, yeah, and I'm about to fly to the moon. He was never going to tell you. If he had any respect for you, he would have told you immediately, not too much later when he finds out he got her pregnant. You would think he would have used a condom, but he obviously is short on brains. Good for you kicking him out. You deserve better. That's literally what I said. Like, if he was smart enough, he would have at least used protection or something. Like, damn, the girl's 24 and he's 37, married and have kids. And honestly, really, he shouldn't have been sleeping around with this girl to begin with. But I'm just saying, if you're going to do it and not get caught, and you don't want to get caught, I would try to at least use some type of protection. The next comment says, let her have him. <laughs> yeah. And then the next comment says, only happened once. Sure, pal. Sure. That's literally what I said. Like, there's no way they only hooked up one time. If I had to give advice to the poster, the original poster, which people call OP. So if I had to give advice to OP, I would say, leave that man. That was not the first time he had sex with that girl. That was just the first time they got pregnant. And yeah, I don't, I don't know what else to say. Like he never would Oh, and the other thing is he never would have told you. He would not have told you if this girl didn't get into a serious car accident. Like I would bet money on that. So, anyways, let's go ahead and get on to the next post. Ciao. So your husband is in love with your sister and you're pregnant by him. And I'm ready to read it. My sister and I had a shitty life growing up with a passive mother and abusive stepfather. Damn. My sister was my protector and role model since not one of the adults were. She tried to shift my stepdad's abuse on her when he got drunk so he wouldn't hurt me. When she left for college, she let me stay in her bed when she slept on the floor in her student room. The days I managed to run away from her home. When I turned 16, she let me move in with her permanently. We never saw our parents again. That's sad. People live rough lives and I feel for those people because at that age, it's like you really don't have, I mean, you don't really have a job. You don't have people you can really lean on because like your support system really is supposed to be your parents. And if you can't lean on them, who do you really lean on? As my husband is very similar to my sister. They're both very calm and kind, both very intelligent. They have the same sense of humor love the same music, books, movies, and games. It's like a weird perverted thing that I found the male version of my sister to fall in love with. <laughs> they get along very well and that's so important to me because they're my only family. I will say though, I feel like you're attracted to, well, let me put it this way. I grew up in a very traditional style home and my dad was like a really good dad, um, very caring, a provider, and son of third. He's funny too, but can be serious. So I feel like in a way, I would want the person that I'm married to kind of like um, be similar to my dad. So I don't think that's um, a weird thing that OP found someone that's similar to her sister because technically her and her sister, like her older sister had to take care of her, if that makes sense. So that's kind of like her um, motherly, fatherly figure in her life. So I can see how she's attracted to someone that's kind of similar to her sister. So she said they get along very well and that's so important to me because they're my only family. We got married a year ago after six years together and I'm 27, pregnant now with our first baby. So they've been together for six years, so... I guess uh, they met or got together when she was 21. That's not bad, but I feel like at 21, between 21 and 27, like you do change a lot mentally. I know I've changed a lot. My sister met her boyfriend, who's 30 years old, a year ago. He got along very well with me and my husband, although I always felt that my husband never really liked the guy. When I asked him once why he didn't like him, he got flustered and told me that he didn't know it was noticeable and apologized. He told me he just didn't think he was good enough for her. 
am. Her boyfriend proposed to my sister last night. We were just having pizzas and they were having beers in my sister's balcony and the boyfriend just suddenly went down on his knees and took out a ring. She was very surprised but happy all the same and said yes. So y'all was just eating pizza and then he popped the question. Like, I I'm gonna need more planning than that. Like, take me out to dinner. Take me out the country and propose to me. I mean, I don't wanna say I require much, but <sighs> pizza at the crib and then you gonna propose to me? Mm, no. No wonder um, OP's husband was like, oh, he's not good enough for her. Because look, that's half-ass. So when we went back home, my husband was a little tipsy. He told me he wasn't tired, that he's going to take one more beer and watch TV, and that I should go to bed. I went back to the living room area, and he was sitting there crying. I asked him what was going on. He told me that he was in love with my sister. Has been for years, but that he knew how wrong this was. He told me that he loved me very much and promised to be a good husband and father to our daughter. He slept on the couch, and he's still sleeping now. Yeah, because what the fuck? Well, honestly, I'm going to kick him out. It's one thing to say, oh, I fuck with your sister. Like, she cool. Like, but y'all got to be in some type of intimate setting more than one time for, for in like, over a course of years to be like, I'm in love with your sister. That's how I feel. But I digress. She said, I'm shocked and full of anxiety. I don't know what to do or how to feel about this. My sister, should I tell her? Nothing can be the same again. But she's my only family and my best friend. And my husband, is this over? Girl, I've been so blind now, I see everything. Of course he's in love with her. How could I be shocked now? Can I save this marriage and my baby? I promised her a better life than the one I had. I promised her kind and loving parents. I can't let her come to the world with estranged parents and new people in their lives. What can I do? Girl, that is crazy. If a guy had the nerve to tell me to my face, mind you, I don't have a sister, but if a guy had the nerve, my husband, not just a guy, if my husband had the nerve to come to my face and say I'm in love with anybody else, like, no, it's a wrap. And I have your baby too. That's disrespectful. And it's like, damn, you, I wish you would have just told me, like, before we, like, conceived at least. Because now it's just making things messier. And I do understand how when you have a kid, like you do kind of want your child to grow up with two parents, like a two parent traditional household, because that's how I would want my child to grow up, because that's how I grew up. But sometimes, but you don't want to be unhappy, I guess. You don't want to sacrifice your happiness. I don't know. I don't know. It's just like, I don't know. It's like, yeah. The traditional family like that's cool and all but like it's not the end of the world if like you guys have to co-parent and stuff the girl she did make like three updates on this post so i'm gonna read all three so edit for an update so he's awake now and i have spoken to him he apologized for hurting me last night he had said that he just felt despair like he had something very beloved and important in his life that he lost and was a morning morning he told me he loved me very much and he wanted for this to work for us and the baby. I asked him if he loved her more than me and he said it's just a different type of love. That means, yeah. I asked him if he could choose between me or her. He said he'd choose me. If you gotta ask a guy to choose between me and anybody else, girl, just don't choose yourself. Choose yourself, don't choose a guy and keep it pushing. I, like, I don't like, that's like giving a guy an ultimatum. You know that Netflix show, The Ultimatum? You know how many couples didn't work out, so why would you think this would work out? And especially like, it's even worse too for um, OP situation because this girl is, I guess, technically competing with her own sister. And... That's got to cut deep when it's like it's your own family that now you're starting to have be envious of or jealous of. That's a different type of hurt and a different type of jealousy. So honestly, I'll just throw the whole man away. I asked him if he thought she was more beautiful. And he said, I'm conventionally more attractive. Of course, he's going to kiss your ass right now. 
I asked him if he stayed with me all these years to be near her. He said I was being unfair to him because he did love me. I asked him if he's okay never seeing her again. <laughs> he teared up but then said he would do anything to save this marriage. He then added that he never really had a mother or a female figure in his life. That's probably why he's attached to her because she's very warm and loving. Okay, but why are you not warm and loving enough for him? Why does he feel the need to have to go to your sister for that? I don't understand. I asked him, do you love her as a mother figure or do you want to sleep with her? He didn't want to answer because it's the latter. He wants to sleep with your sister. I asked him if he fantasized about her while sleeping with me. He refused to answer at first and then said, why are you doing this to yourself? Yeah, I would say the same thing. Why are you doing this to yourself? Like, you kind of already know the answers to everything. But at the same time, I can see um, as a woman, it's kind of like, yeah, I want to know these things. Even though, yeah, I'm definitely going to cut you off. But I just want to know these things for closure. But honestly, that closure shit is for the birds. I asked him, will he lose interest in me if she's out of our lives and it's just us? He looked like he was thinking about this for the first time and then he said that he chose me and the baby. He wants to start therapy and counseling because he thinks this marriage is salvageable. Ugh, I don't know. Do y'all think this marriage is salvageable? Comment below. <laughs> okay, anyway, so this is update number two. So it said, we had dinner with my sister and her fiance. My husband was unusually silent and didn't initiate any talk with my sister. And he barely looked at her. It was a nice dinner. My sister is too happy to notice anything with her engagement and trip tomorrow. Before she went, however, my husband hugged her longer than usual. He told her he was happy for her and wished her a great trip. All while hugging her, then he held her hand and told her I didn't congratulate you properly yesterday because I was drunk and he congratulated her again. He was tearing up again. Then he hugged my sister's fiance and congratulated him. He was silent on our way home. He told me he loved me when we got back and that he'll do anything to make this work, but that I shouldn't take any decisions while I'm hurt. We are starting couples therapy. I want him to be 100% honest. He asked me not to tell anyone about his confession because it meant nothing. I told him that I didn't want him around my sister anymore if I would give him a chance. He asked me how this would work when we're always together. Exactly, like this is your sister. Like, come on now, Lee. you can't just say, you can't just say you can't be around my sister anymore because I don't know like I I don't like that if it's not your sister it would have been somebody else that's all I'm saying if it wasn't your sister it would have been somebody else you can't stop these men from doing what they want to do unless they truly are focused on just you and obviously your husband is not focused on just you Honestly, I'm not even like the best at giving advice, but you know, it's whatever. So he asked me how this would work when we're always together. She will suspect something and he doesn't want me to tell her because he's embarrassed. I told him he could just minimize his interactions with her. I told him to sleep on the couch again tonight because I haven't made up my mind about my next move yet. And that until then, it's the couch for him. Yeah, it's honestly hotel and you paying for it. Okay, and then she has her final update. So basically she said, I asked my husband for separation because I need to be in my own, be on my own to make my decision. We are also starting marriage counseling, whether we stay together or not. Yeah, I would, yeah, definitely separate myself from him. I want to know everything that he has been withholding from me, right? Because if he's been withholding that, imagine what other stuff he's been withholding. That's a shocker saying that I'm totally in love with your sister. That's that's crazy. And it's like, okay, what else? What other shocking news do you have? He thinks I'm torturing myself, but he's wrong. I'm tortured with half thoughts. With marriage counseling, I'm hoping I can get to the bottom of his feelings in a safe environment. He cried when I told him that I wanted to separate. He told me he's lost everything in one day because of a drunk confession that made nothing. It definitely meant something. People speak their truth, or the truth normally comes out when people are under the influence. Which I don't know why that's that is, but I may have to do some research on that. But he said he loves me and wants to be with me. He suggested that we move away. He has job offers in other cities on several occasions. He said this could be our new start. 
new start to another bit that he gonna fall in love with. We were renovating the basement this summer to make it a guest room because our current guest room is being turned into a baby room. He will live in the basement. <laughs> now he'll live in the basement. It has separate entrances and the mini kitchen is almost damn. So basically, they're gonna be separate, separate. So he don't even have to walk in the house at all. That's crazy. I have decided not to tell my sisters about any of this. This is my battle and my marriage. I love my sister so much that, but I'll be very honest here. I resent her. I'm jealous of her and I think I, I have always been jealous of her. She's a way better person than I am. I hate that I never had the chance to return the favor as she always been perfect and never needed help. I resent that she isn't as angry as I am about the injustice we had to endure. I hate that she's so good to me and my husband. I hate that he sees how much better of a person she is. And I hate that I don't blame him for loving her instead of me. That's sad. That's honestly terrible. And I just would not be with that person. I would divorce my husband because you don't want to resent your family like that. You don't want a, you don't want to allow a third party to just tear up a strong relationship that you have with someone that's like your blood like your kin it's really sad and i called that too remember i said earlier she's probably gonna resent her sister and that's just probably adding more fuel to the fire that's a very toxic situation to be honest i would not move to another city or state with that man at all i would divorce him and keep it pushing because at the end of the day like she said, her sister is like her only family. Ugh. And it's like her sister seems like a really good, genuinely nice person. I don't think she should ruin that relationship over some man. And I am kind of glad that she didn't tell her sister about her husband's confession because that would just make things awkward just for everybody. So yeah, good kudos to you, OP, for not telling your sister. I feel very bad though. Don't compare yourself. That's super toxic. And honestly, you just need to divorce this person. Okay, let me go ahead and read the top three comments. Some of these comments are a little bit long, but I'm only reading three. So it says, Grandma here, don't fall for the sunken cost fallacy, please. You spent your youth with him. Exactly. That's what I said. You spent your youth with him. Do you want to spend your adult years in middle age with a guy who liked you at first enough to date you, then met your sister and moved back to your area, and then fell in love? You see, she's the perfect one because he never really had a relationship with her, just a fantasy. Exactly. You see, I had beautiful sisters. I didn't have great self-esteem when I was young because, you know, comparisons, like I said. But the one boundary I had with the men in my life they had to want me first and not my sisters period i never want to feel less than with my guy and i had enough of that in my family so my dear your choices are therapy to allow you to live and thrive because i'm sure he'll suck it up and say he'll stay married with you because baby etc he'll say yes you're his wife etc etc do your decision will be you will be do you want to live your life knowing your courtship and marriage was not the truth for him for him can you trust him to change to realize that his love was a fantasy? Can you live with your sister always thinking he's looking at your looking at her first and suddenly for you? Hard questions to answer that must be answered for you to have a happy life going forward. And most especially your sister's not at fault. She really isn't. Period. That that's what I had said though earlier. You met this guy in your early, like, 21 and stuff. Like, people change so much between 21 and 27. I know I am. I'm constantly changing. I'm only 25. It's like the same thing with high school sweet sweethearts. Just because you met this person and you dated them all throughout elementary, middle, and high school doesn't mean you have to marry them. People change. And if y'all change, that's fine. Like, that's a good thing. But I digress. The next comment says, you are not your parents. Even if you do the solo parenting, you won't be them. Would you rather stay knowing your husband feels feels about just for the sake of your kids? Sleep with him knowing he will be wishing it was your sister? Good luck, OP, or <laughs> whatever you decide. Literally, that's the other thing. Like, 
I kind of would want to know, like, okay, if we sleep together, are you thinking about me when we sleep, or are you thinking about my sister? Which, at the same time, I'm like, I don't even know if I want to know that, like, because I already know what the answer is probably going to be, which is, you're thinking about my sister. That's dead. The last comment says, oh, hell no, you will forever be comparing yourself to her and doubting his love for you. Do not ever let someone settle for you or you will miss out on an amazing connection you can have in this life with someone else deserving of you. I feel like she's settling for this guy because of the fact that her sister was the only person she really had in her life. So in a way, I feel like OP didn't really have a male figure or father figure in her life. I don't want to generalize a whole group of people, but a lot of people do tend to gravitate towards someone who's kind of like a fatherly figure and once they find that person they hold on to that person for dear life and i feel like that's what op is trying to do because like her husband was is technically her safety net but girl f that like if he's fantasizing about my sister no on to the next story So this last story is a little bit more morbid, so trigger warning. Hi, sorry I want to type this out. I know most of you will try to save me. I don't want it. I just want to get this all so I can depart with a clear mind. I've had a few years to think this through and it's what I want. I went into the hospital and I had to have a bowel resection. I was told no big deal, maybe three days in the hospital. I awoke to my entire colon removed. I now had to okay this this, this nasty y'all I'm gonna have to look this up like what the hell is that okay so it says a bowel resection is surgery to remove part of the small intestine large intestine or both okay I'm not a doctor so I don't know <laughs> I now had to crap in a plastic bag what was supposed to be three small holes now turned into a 16 inch incision. Sound like somebody, sound like somebody fucked up. So Opie said, I was shocked and scared and in pain. I bet it was unbearable and I asked my mother to end my life. So to this day, I still have no idea why my colon was removed. That, okay, that, that sounds like malpractice. So I was sued. So I go on two years and I deal with a new sort of problem. The new one is I get plugged easily and it typically requires medical intervention to correct. The cause is two hernias I'm supposed to have repaired, but pandemic. So it's pushed to 2022. Now most pain patients will tell you hernia, a hernia or whatever is a bulging of an organ or tissue through an abnormal opening. Which, yeah, he has a 16-inch incision. I'm pretty sure he has some bulging going on. He said it was pushed to 2022. Now, most patients will tell you doctors do not care. I had a golf ball-sized obstruction poking from my side. Damn, and the doctor said I was drug-seeking. Of course, I was in so much pain, they had to bring out ketamine just to be able to sedate me. I woke up 12 hours later with my obstruction cleared but still in pain. So hernia surgery comes, I'm not thrilled because I know these next few days will suck. I wake up and the nightmares start. I'll spare the details, but a nurse thought dilated, which I guess is a actual medicine. They said dilated was too strong and bumped me down to morphine. Then not two hours later, through my screaming, I noticed he double dosed my blood pressure med medication and I almost died. And in my crash, I was gone for five hours. God, they put this man on some hard, on some hard drugs, from dilated to morphine, but double dosed on my blood pressure. That is wow. In my crash, I was gone for five hours, and those five hours, I was no longer in pain, and I was happy. Then I woke up. So I entered a depression. My primary care doctor decides that I shouldn't be in pain because they don't know why. I don't know either, but that's not my job. <laughs> So he decides it's time to reduce my meds to disastrous results. I'm in more pain than I can deal with and I'm done. I've decided I no longer wish to suffer. 
As of yesterday, I set up a DNR and stopped eating. I chose this way because it will look natural, but I will have a note explaining how our medical system failed me and let me suffer. And it was a doctor who, who spearheaded it. They put doctor put me into a medical hell and fucked my life up. He decided he wants to wash his hands and not help with pain management. I've decided to suicide to give myself relief and let the world know it's his fault. But thank you for reading. I won't be answering questions, but part of my note asks that this exact post be updated. Thank you, Reddit. I love you and I will miss you. That's sad. First of all, I hope that doctor gets prison because that was basically mal a form of malpractice right there like a, that doctor can go to prison that's wow and i feel bad because i can't even imagine how much pain um op was probably in let's go ahead and read the top three comments so it says yeah that doctor won't get <laughs> Wow, they say, yeah, that doctor won't get the message. Then <laughs> the next comment says, please ask your primary care doctor for a referral to see a palliative care specialist. I'm really bad at pronouncing these names or, or these um, words. You don't have to be dying. They work with people who have chronic or life-limiting conditions or pain and focus purely on managing your symptoms and side effects and getting your pain management right. I've seen them make the world of a difference for many people with really challenging conditions. Good luck. I've never heard of that. So, yeah, noting. Then the last comment said, he won't give a shit. If anything, you'll be doing him a favor as he won't have to worry about you anymore. Don't let him off easy. Sue him instead. Exactly like he's not going to get the message. It's in, especially on Reddit. And you're on a throwaway account at that. Come on now. I would have definitely have... Um, sued this man i don't care if i died during the lawsuit at least it was made known publicly known not to mess with this guy i, I don't even know if op is even still around i really hope they are but if you are around please like sue this man sue the whole hospital or wherever you went to because that's just like that's it was supposed to be three holes but not, ugh. You got a 16 inch incision I, I just can't get over that part like that insane that is gonna be the last story on true off my chest subreddit so hopefully you guys enjoyed these stories if you have any advice or just you know opinions that you want to um, spew out about these stories especially for the original posters definitely comment below I definitely share some of my opinions I still feel like I could have gotten my opinions off a little bit better, but I will say this video was very impromptu. If you guys are on Reddit and you have any subreddits that you guys follow that have like some crazy stories or, you know, conspiracy theories and stuff, definitely post it, comment below. I'll check it out and probably feature it on my channel. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed watching this video. Make sure to like and subscribe if you did, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.